Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we've got like a special episode for you. Like, I'm starting a new um, series. I'm like, what I'm going to start doing is like taking videos from YouTube and kind of because there's there's people like on the net that are actually you know talking about this. And I mean, this is kind of like the result of our work, you know, like over the last couple of years with the meetup and the show and the book and stuff. So that's cool. A couple of quick notes um, beforehand. The reason I'm wearing this coat instead of my regular tie and jacket is because, like, I don't have a free will and I, I forgot to, like, go to the dry cleaners. And, like, and this sign, I decided for today's show to, like, turn it on its side, you know. And it's kind of like a metaphor. It's like, you know, we're not really, like, turning the world upside down with this, but we are definitely turning it on its side. And you can see free will is going down. <laughs> All right. So now today, yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be a, it's a, it's a good show. Um, basically, the woman's name is Beverly Goldberg, and she um, she um, she presented a, a an eleven minute um, YouTube video called "The Western Illusion of Free Will and Our Criminal Justice System," and I just thought it was so good, you know, that um, that it inspired me to just like you know have it be the first episode of this new series. Okay, um, let's see, Beverly's from, um, I, think from, I think she's from the UK, she's got like a British accent, I think she's from Scotland or something, and um, the video, you know, so, so listen, yeah, it may not be so, you know, you got to listen um, well for, you know, because of the accent, and the video quality isn't all that great, but, but it, it's definitely good. Okay, so, um, so let's watch, you know, let's watch, and what I'll do is like after that, I'll come back and kind of like, we'll just review what you said. All right, so um, Beverly, here you go. I had been making this video today, but I got a very nice response from someone called Chupernovos. So um, I kind of decided to make another one. So thank you again for your video response. Um, I'd just like to point out as well that in philosophy, there is no right or wrong answer. There's just simply opinions so um if you disagree with what i'm saying then please by all means express it i'm very open to to criticism and scrutiny i will take it on constructively rather than defensively because i, I do believe that um, it's one of our very important human rights to scrutinize things and, and we should exercise it all the time whenever we can so please by all means anyway today i'm going to be talking about um the importance of free will in in Western society and politics and the effect that this has on the entire political structure, but most importantly, our criminal justice system, which is which seems to be entirely founded on this idea that people are responsible for their crimes and that they make um, a free choice decision to commit crime when ultimately they could have abstained or done done the opposite. Um, well, firstly, I'll, I'll do a little introduction on, on my view of free will and determinism, which is essentially that there is, there is no such thing as a free choice that's free of any influence. Like, to me, free will and determinism are are actually, well, determinism is a prerequisite of free will. We, we do have the ability to make choices, but those choices are underpinned and determined by something else. Saying there is pure free will is like saying there's effect without cause. And you would never hear a scientist say that. That's like blasphemy to them. They would never stand up and say there's such thing as effect simply by coincidence without cause. So to me, there's, there's definitely... Um, there's definitely a predeterminism underpinning absolutely everything that we do in society. Um, but th that conflicts like hugely with this idea that we have in the West that that we're all the kind of we're all the drivers drivers of our own lives and, and we have free choices and we make these choices and, and thus when something goes wrong in our lives, we are entirely responsible for that. Uh, and it's it's such a huge notion and a huge guise that it just it leaves me flabbergasted that we could potentially be living under this idea that's a huge illusion essentially um and part of one of the, the products of our society that makes 
me think about this the most is the criminal justice system because um, that, as I mentioned earlier, obviously functions on the idea that criminals make an active choice to, make, to commit crimes rather than they are forced into committing crimes by predetermined factors that are out of their control. Um, looking at crime from a deterministic perspective, you'd probably go in from the angle that it's um, that someone commits crime because you know there are factors in their life that have led them to do so. For instance, you know, a, a murderer may have had mitigating factors back in their childhood that that caused them to commit such crime. Um, and you know that that process of cause and effect throughout their life eventually led up to what chaos theory might call the butterfly effect and then eventually murdering someone. Um, under f the idea or notion of free will though, that murderer, regardless of the predetermining factors in their life, made an absolute choice, an absolute free of influence choice to murder where they could have alternatively abstained. Now, obviously in cases like that, responsibility and free will merits punishment. If someone has committed a crime and it's out of their control, i.e. due to deterministic factors, then how can we punish them? If you think about it, the whole idea of punishment in the criminal justice system is dependent on the idea that we make free will decisions that we are responsible for. Thus, we can be punished for them and not make these free will decisions again. Um, so there's still this idea that we we um, hold criminals responsible entirely for their crimes. Um, to me, though as well um the the approach that i see our criminal justice system currently taking is sort of halfway between counseling and punishment in that you know it definitely acknowledges you know predetermining factors you know like mitigating circumstances childhood abuse stuff like that and even battered women syndrome like it's an actual syndrome, it exists, which is crazy if you ask me, but um, it does. So um, it definitely takes these predetermining factors into account, but ultimately if all crimes, in, no matter, like disregarding the severity, if all crimes are predetermined by um, mitigating factors, then why are we still punishing our criminals? Why aren't we trying to counsel them and help them? Because eventually once you know our morals get to a stage where they have developed so much through a like natural selection like I'm a, I'm a big fan of AC Greeling and and he wrote a very good piece on how he believes that morals do do develop through natural selection which I which I completely agreed with Um, once we do get to a stage where our morals de develop so much so in that deterrence isn't required anymore people's guilt alone is enough to should be enough to deter them from committing a crime um then again punishment shouldn't shouldn't really be necessary but it's it's still it still is happening today and obviously whether this happens through you know the pushing pushing through of a, a reformed penal system or natural social evolution who knows I mean all all I can think of is you know the abolition of, of capital punishment and then that was pushed through it was hugely unpopular at the time amongst the British public and no one uh, well not no one but I mean there weren't even a huge majority of MPs in favour of abolition at the time in the House of Parliament either but it was pushed through and because of that we have a much more civilised criminal justice system today which I'm very proud of um, actually I think our, our criminal justice system compared to a lot around the world that obviously use measures such as capital punishment which I personally completely disagree with um, I, I do I do definitely think that we offer us a, a better alternative but also maybe this idea of free will if it were to develop 
or is it develop out and people started to acknowledge this idea of determinism a little bit more and and the idea that maybe people aren't quite as responsible for their decisions as they're made out to be and that everything is just a little bit more out of people's control than, than they like to think it is then maybe we'd, we'd see ourselves to adopting some kind of criminal system that's not a criminal justice system that's a criminal reform system that looks and treats looks at criminals and treats criminals not as criminals but as people needing help people who have um people who have found themselves in a situation where they you know when they they felt compelled to do something out of their own choice and as a deviation of the morals in society um, as people who are victims of their circumstances um, I, I know this isn't obviously a very valid example but um, the book Crime and Punishment for instance the the main character he commits um, commits a double murder but what, what struck me in this book was that it's it wasn't like he woke up and he made a a clear free will decision to say I'm going to go out and commit a double murder it, his judgment the whole the whole book was the whole purpose of it of this book was to portray the fact that his judgment was entirely clouded by these these thoughts that were um were like poisoning his brain and the the kind of the conflicts that then followed was was him throughout the rest of the book trying to to battle with himself and the morals of society and understand why he did something like that because he felt horrible for it afterwards he didn't feel as though um it was what he wanted as a true representation of himself and again to me that's a good example of the predeterministic nature of not just crime but everything and that um if if society were to realize that essentially free will on the most part is false one of the big implications that would have would be on our criminal justice system so um i'm gonna wrap that up today anyway i feel like i've been blabbering a lot again um so so yeah thank you very much for listening to me if you had have and like i said if you have any interesting responses or anything to say even if it's like swearing or inane bullshit still welcome like i said freedom of speech so yeah see you later okay um i hope you enjoyed that you know she um beverly presents really well you know um so like the first point i want to make like you know beverly's first statement she says like in philosophy there are no right and wrong answers and you know i guess that's maybe that what they teach in philosophy but you got to remember like philosophy isn't necessarily life for example like like that's a table and this is a chair right so if you were in a philosophy class or in any kind of class and you would say no that's a chair and this is a table that would be wrong you know so like so like there is a right and wrong to reality okay um but anyway Beverly starts out strong. She, she, um, as you noticed, she starts out with explaining the reason why free will is impossible, and that's because everything has a cause. You know, if there's a cause to um, anything we do, anything we say, think, feel, whatever, and then there's a cause to that, and then there's a cause to that, and causes always go back into the, the past, you know, you have this chain of causality going back to before we were born, and naturally um, that very clearly, very strongly and easily explains why free will is impossible. Okay. Um, and another thing that, that Beverly does is like she recognizes the importance of, of this, of this um, matter, of this question. Um, you know, like she can't understand why and how civilization is founded on this like completely erroneous, mistaken notion of free will. And, and you know, like a lot of philosophers, well, most philosophers don't get it. Most philosophers actually, you know, who write about this um, actually think they have free will. But, but even the philosophers who, you know, the few who, who write about it and understand the free will's illusion, they don't really see the significance of this. And, and Beverly does, which is really cool. Okay. Um, so let's see. And, you know, she... Um, 
Okay, she, you know, she shows, she shows real compassion in, in focusing on the criminal justice system. I've, I've mentioned this in the past, um, how, you know, like everyone who's in jail, prison, you know, for, uh, reform school, whatever, everyone who, who we incarcerate in prison, every one of them is just as innocent as any one of us. You know, because they don't have a free will, because they were, they're, they're just like unlucky, very unlucky, and we're lucky that, you know, that we don't commit those crimes or whatever. But, but you know, it's really cool that, she, you know, Beverly, she, she, she shows real compassion, you know, when, when talking about this, and that's important because that's what it's about. Um, you know, it's a, to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion, that, that, that we're just programmed to do whatever we do, whenever we other, when other, 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 <laughs> I didn't sleep that much last night, <laughs> whenever other people do wrong, um, we will under, we'll be more understanding. I mean, we, we may have to like separate people like, you know, by maybe putting them in jail. I mean, somebody's going around killing people, you know, we're, we're certainly, we can't allow that, but, but, you know, I, I, we, you know, rationally, realistically, um, Truly, we, we shouldn't be punishing them. You know, it's, it's just wrong. It's just, it doesn't make sense. Um, and, you know, th there's this idea of an, a deterrent to crime by punishing people. But, you know, they've done a lot of research and they found that, um, that deterrent may work in some cases. In a lot of cases, it really doesn't or isn't really necessary, whatever. Um, so anyway, then, you know, as you notice, she... Um, she goes on to focus on the um, the influences of childhood. You know, like, you know, people who commit crimes, they don't do it in a vacuum. They don't do it for no reason. They don't do it of a free will. You know, a, a lot of them came, would, would come from real backgrounds that, um, that, um, that just like, would lead to that, maybe having a single parent, maybe being abused uh, as a child, you know, just, um, just there, there are a lot of conditions in, in childhood that, 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 that could cause that, and you might say, all right, but not all kids are like that, and, you know, like, or a lot of kids who grow up in, in situations like that don't become criminals, but yeah, fine, but like in those cases, there are going to be other reasons, other kinds of factors that lead them to do what they do. Okay, um, and and a, a very important uh, point Beverly has emphasized is that like, in order to punish someone, really, you, you, it requires that free will, will belief. I mean, again, there is a kind of a pragmatic reason for punishment, um, you know, based on deterrence, but um, but really, our criminal justice system. Um, Years ago, 200 years ago in the United States, I'm not sure about Great Britain. Great Britain, I think, is a more advanced, you know, as, as Beverly pointed out in this, than we are here. But, um, you know, 200 years ago, we used to have, like, reformatories, penitentiaries. And, like, you know, if, if you know the, the roots of these words, to, you know, to reform someone is, like, to help them become better. Penitentiaries, like, to, to bring them to penitence, to show them the, the, the error of their ways. You know, it's not, you know, our criminal justice system has gone from penitence and reform to, um, to retribution, to, you know, just deserts. You know, you did something evil, so you deserve to, to suffer. And that's just like so wrong because it's so insane because people don't have a free will. Okay. Um, so... Okay, let's see. So yeah, so she asks, you know, why we're we're still punishing criminals. Um, you know, she she refers to, like in Great Britain again. They're 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 ahead of us. I think they um, whether in Scotland, I don't know if they have a different system than than um, England, but um, you know, they um they've outlawed um capital punishment. They don't kill people anymore for that. Um, again, because like it's just so wrong. I mean, like you know, it it doesn't just affect the people you kill, it, it affects their families, it affects their communities, their friends, you know? Um, so, okay. And, um, <laughs> all right. And another thing Beverly mentions is this, this guy, A.C. Grayling, who um, apparently has written on the idea that, um, that basically 
as we evolve, I mean, I haven't written, I haven't read his work, but you know, you know, as you, as you, as you heard, he's a professor at Oxford. As, as you heard, you know, he feels that that our more morals develop from from natural selection. That they're just a process of our evolution, and that as we become more civilized, more evolved as people, that we won't need deterrence, you know, to to um. To, to stop us from doing wrong and think about it that's like you know most of us like we don't go out and kill people because like we're afraid of spending the rest of our lives in prison or something we go we we don't do wrong things most of us most of the time because we know it's wrong we have a conscience you know and i think that's a very very important point that beverly's bringing out is that like you know in the future you know she predicts that um that people's conscience will be enough to um, to just deter them. That, you, that we won't have to like you know threaten ourselves with with, with all this kind of punishment. Um, they're finding out like in psychology and education that like in the past you know like when kids like you know messed up in school and stuff they'd take a ruler or a rod or something you know they had that expression spare the rod spoil the child you know. I mean, like, and, you know, they don't do that anymore. We don't do that. We, we, we've gone from, like, negative reinforcement, I think that might be, to, to positive reinforcement. The idea that, like, you know, if you reward kids for doing good, then they're going to do good. They're not going to do bad, you know, for which you have to punish them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, what else? Okay. And... Um, so yeah, um, the idea, you know, Beverly, as, as you as you heard, she she says that you know, we we will eventually, and this is happening. We're because we'll we're going to recognize eventually as a world that free will is an illusion. We're going to go from from like as she says, seeing these people in prison and and jail and stuff not as criminals but as people needing help. That is really important because, like, that's what they are. And nobody, you know, people don't commit crimes, especially like crimes for which they know there's like a severe penalty and stuff. I mean, you know, whether it's drug addiction or, or just like, like um, a lot of crimes are like. I think in Les Miserables, I think he, the the man is like um, starving or, or he's really hungry. He steals a loaf of bread, you know, and like I think they sentence him to life or that. I don't know. But like, you know, the idea is, yeah, um, people, we do, when we do wrong, naturally, it's not up to us, but to the extent that we're looking for reasons why, there are reasons. There, you know, um, we, we need sometimes um, help and kind of like understanding um, right from wrong. Actually, that's going to be the next, no, um, I'm going to do an episode on this uh, in a couple of episodes. But it's just like the idea that, um, you know, our, our version of right and wrong isn't up to us. Uh, whether we learn that something is right and wrong a lot of times isn't up to us. Um, sometimes we just don't have the will to do what's right, even though we, we know that, um, that, that it's right. Or, um, you know, just there, you know, we're just, it's that. And, you know, again, think about this. I've done shows on this. If we had a free will, we would um, be complete angels. We would none of who would who would freely choose to do anything wrong? Because like you know, one thing we've known from the time of the Greeks is that we're hardwired to like um, to seek pleasure and to seek goodness. Now um, I know what you may be saying. Well, sometimes people say say to themselves, well, you know, you know, I know this is wrong. I know this is wrong to like let's say. Um, um, steal funds from a company or whatever. I don't know. But like, then they'll say to themselves, but, you know, this company's been stealing, you know, money from its employees and from its customers for years. So like, you know, they deserve it, which is a rationalization based on actually the attribution of free will to the company. But again, what I'm trying to say is sometimes we do, um, we do wrong telling ourselves it's right, it's a rationalization. The Greeks kind of like understood that like at the time that we do anything, we can't but do right. It's only in retrospect a lot of times that we find out, oh yeah, it was wrong. You know, I realize now what I didn't realize then because I was like, you know, there's like crimes of passions, you know, stuff like that. Okay. And, and finally, Beverly ends her <coughs> excellent presentation with um, going into like 
uh, Dostoevsky's, uh, the Russian author's like classic um, work, Crime and Punishment. I haven't read it, but she has. It's like 500 pages. And she talks about like, you know, this guy commits a double murder. And Dostoevsky is like, is like explaining, you know, this didn't happen in a vacuum. He goes in, you know, in great detail explaining how um, all these different factors that led to, you know, the, the challenges he was, he was going through that, that led him to ultimately do what he did. And so like, and you would wonder, because like this, I don't know when he wrote this, but I imagine, you know, it was like a while back and you would have thought that, you know, people would have gotten that, you know, that we don't have a free will from this. And there, I think there are other books that kind of explain it. But, but anyway, anyway, so um, Beverly, thanks for an excellent video. You, you started kind of like a new kind of um, really way of doing this show, because really I want to like present as many other people on this show as possible because like one thing I found out is that um, again since we I started the the meetup in Manhattan you know exploring illusion of free will in April 2010 and then we premiered this show in January 2011 and like before that you know you could there weren't very many videos that, on free will at all, you know, in um, on YouTube now, like there's like there are new ones coming in every day. I mean, it's very cool. So, all right, we've got about a minute left. I'll do a brief commercial for for our show in Manhattan. It's called Myth of Free Will. Uh, it's on every Wednesday night, 11 p.m. And that's like if you're in Great Britain, that's like four in the morning. But uh, the thing is, like, it's on cable, you know, in Manhattan. You know, it's, they have about 500 thousand you know viewers there you know it's a 1.5 million um population but they also stream our show live um you know over the internet so like you could watch it anywhere you are okay and and i've got my book there today because like you know i wrote a book like with that first 18 episodes of the show and like you don't have to buy it because like i uploaded it to google so you can like download it and read it for free all right well Thanks for watching. Beverly, thank you for the, a very, very excellent video. And um, I guess we'll see you next time on Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Thanks.